And what is up guys, Technical Stinkers here. Something a little bit different today. So if you've been following my channel, I've been vlogging every day in this 3D print journey, trying to start up a 3D print business here at home. I am a business owner elsewhere, but I, my business has nothing to do with 3D printing. Uh, but I'm trying to make a business out of this and just cataloging my process, just exhibition, not instructional. So subscribe to the channel and follow along for the fun. So I've been mentioning that I had an idea for a new product and I wanted to do sort of a dedicated video of a concept all the way to fruition. So probably working on this over the next few days, but very simple concept. And I'm going to kind of lay it out here. So if you've been watching the channel, you know, I was talking about uh, making sort of a stash, a hide. I got inspiration from some of the products I sell in my main business, uh, things like fake Coca-Cola cans. It really, you unscrew the bottom and you put whatever you want in there and you put it on the shelf and if someone's raiding your house then you know maybe they'll overlook it the gist being it's like hidden in plain sight and so i kind of had the inspiration for that for an hvac grill so they make also these stashes that are fake electrical outlets that go on your wall and it's not really an electrical outlet you just open it up you can stash things in there and you get away with it. But if the volume that you could put inside is pretty small. So I thought, well, I've got these HVAC uh, return grills, filter grills. You know, if you live in a house and you have these, you know, this is where you put the filter and the air gets sucked in, goes through your HVAC and then gets returned uh, back out. So my aim is to take this and model a tub, a uh, cavity, the box, and this goes in your wall you put a filter in place and it looks like just any ordinary air return but when you open it up and take the filter out it's just a cavity in here that you can store your precious valuables or anything like that it's not designed to be hyper secure like with a lock or a key or anything like that it's just designed to be hidden in plain sight so i mean yeah anyone could if they knew to look here they would open it up and see it in here but it's kind of a good sort of in between, if you're not really that concerned about it, but somewhat concerned, you just don't want to leave things laying around, but they don't necessarily need to be locked up. Just another option for people. So my aim is to take this, again, a off the shelf component and then 3D design something around it, put them together and then offer it as its own product in sort of a package. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, make, make some measurements out of it, find out where the screw holes are to mount in. This is a 14 by 14 air return. So the interior section is for a 14 square. Studs are 16 on center. That means it's 14 and a half from edge to edge on the interior cavity. So I will have a slight amount of space on either side and that should work great for our purposes here because that box can go inside between the studs and this can mount in screw in, secure it all down, and you're ready to rock. So I'm gonna go through and design something real simple. I'll probably time lapse it and put some lo-fi hip hop to it just to make it seem a little more engaging. So it's been about a week since we uh, initially kicked off our project, but we have our working concept here. Had to make some adjustments, move the holes around a little bit, widen it up a little bit. We added some fillets to it to kind of soften the edges, but ultimately I hope to print these on my Cobra 2 Maxes. And one of them has a one millimeter nozzle, which really drops the print time down. And a one millimeter fillet doesn't really translate through on a one millimeter nozzle with a 0.7 layer height, but it's all good. This is a very utilitarian thing. Consider doing it in PET G uh, because when this is put into a wall, the interior wall is in non-conditioned space. 
And so I wanted to make sure I had extra rigidity uh, and tolerance for different you know, levels of heat. Uh, but this one's done in PLA and I'm probably gonna stress test it. I've got one out in my building now and maybe I'll put this one in my, uh, at my crypto miner exhaust to see if I can like simulate that hot temperature, that hot environment. Thing is though, this doesn't really have to support uh, much in the way of weight because of it's so thin, the profile, it's never gonna have to like have a lot of weight on it. And the screws are holding this in and the metal um, housing on the outside. So this is looking pretty good. I think this, we're gonna call this cabbage. I went through and did a, a how-to install guide video because when I post the listing on the internet, I need to have some kind of guide on how to install it or to demonstrate to a potential customer how easy it is to put it in. So let's roll the abridged version of that now. All right, and so what about pricing? How I'm gonna price this thing? The model itself took 920 grams of filament, printing it 100% solid. Uh, it's like four, I think about four millimeters thick all the way through. So it's basically one spool of filament. All right, and so I'm not gonna do the thing where some people talk about how much things cost and then they you know, end up, well, I got this for free. And then you know, if you do this and they use this coupon code, you get it for, I'm just gonna give you the actual cost of these things. I got the filter grills from Home Depot's website. It's a, I got two of them and they came out to 17 $15.50 each. Now the one I bought for the original model, I bought off the shelf at Lowe's and it was $33. So buying these on the internet certainly saves a lot and that's shipped, landed to my door. I took the total amount, taxes and all that kind of stuff, divided it by two and it came out to $17.50. 920 grams of filament. I used the Elegoo Rapid PLA Plus, which I buy in 10 kilogram um, uh, cases and it comes out to $10.90 per spool. The total cost of filament comes out to $10.03. So $10 and then $17.50 for the filter grill itself. And then I'm going to include a filter. So the most basicest filter that you can buy at Lowe's, which it's cheaper to buy at Lowe's, the Merv One filters, comes out to right at $3 per filter. So what I'll usually do when I'm pricing stuff, I don't know how other people do it. Let me know how you do it in the comments is what I'll, I'll take the price that I think I want to price it at and then I'll back up from there because Etsy's fee is basically based off how much you charge, how much revenue you generate off the item. And so I take that and then I take that uh, Etsy fee, that Etsy fee that is probably gonna be somewhat correct and I figure my Etsy fee at 10% and then I back it up from there, roll that into the costs. I factor in shipping supplies, basically what I think it's gonna be uh, with boxes and packing material and shipping labels and things like that. And I don't work in any amortization or anything like that of the machines, but I do factor in failure. A model like this, it's pretty simple. Some of the more organic models with a lot of supports and things like that have, in my experience, a higher failure rate, but a real simple model like this is somewhat unlikely to fail. So I'm gonna put in a failure rate of say 5%. So I'll just take my $10.03 and multiply it by 1.05 to give me $10.53, uh, my total filament cost 
to print the tub section. So my proposed cost, I'm gonna look back and forth at the screen, sorry about that. Uh, I can't remember that good. And my proposed cost for this of what I wanna charge is $80. So if I charge $80 and I figure my Etsy fee will be $8, I'm gonna figure about $3 in packing supplies. My total cost for the filter, the shipping, and the model itself comes out to $28. And so my revised total, $40 to print this thing, which gives me about a $40 profit. And so it's basically like a keystone markup, one for one. That sounds about right. It's a little bit over 50% and it's not like the times three. And I know a lot of people that do 3D prints uh, will say, you know, you multiply it by three or multiply it by the number of hours that you're putting on the printer. Uh, but for me personally, at this scale, I don't really think I uh, sort of apply into those things. I talk often about scaling and how I'm constantly thinking about scaling with all of these 3D prints that I'm doing. But at my size, my printers are mostly quiet, and so I'm not sure that it really applies uh, unless you're into a farm scenario where all of your machines are running at all times, and you, if you have new products coming in, they're really kind of robbing that time from the other machines that are constantly going. Now, certainly, if I sort of start selling a million of these things per day, then it makes sense to look at the revised pricing model and adjust accordingly. The great thing about this product too is that I can sell it in my retail stores and I know that's not something that most people have or uh, have the opportunity to do. I get comments from time to time of people suggesting or asking if I go to local festivals or school events or things like that to try to sell 3D printed models. That really doesn't, um, that doesn't really fit into my model of what I'm trying to do. Uh, it's really not worth my time. And again, I understand everybody's time is different. Everybody values their time differently. I value mine differently. And so I've got, you know, many other types of projects going on. And so I don't really see the appeal of going and trying to sling at, you know, events and things like that, having to print a whole excess amount of a product in order to try to go somewhere and hopefully sell it just doesn't fit into how I think the sort of 3D print thing should run. Now I do print PAR stock for most of my items. That means I have them ready to ship at a moment's notice. So if I get the order, it can go right out the door and that triggers me to print another one. I don't really print on demand to order unless it's something really, really big, but I don't like the idea of making someone wait for days in order to get something uh, because the print could fail. You could run into any number of, uh, of issues. And the longer someone waits in the modern day, people are accustomed to getting things shipped you know, immediately, getting them within two or three days because you know, like the Amazon effect and things like that. People expect that. And I feel like selling something and it's kind of making someone wait for a week before it even ships, it uh, really is kind of puts a sour taste in people's mouth and uh, try to avoid that if all possible. So what I'm gonna do is take this example and I'll probably just band it up with maybe this just as nicely as I can. I've started to think, should I put this in some kind of uh, packaging or um, put like a band around it to make it more retail uh, ready, retail friendly. And I just don't think that's the way to go. So what I'm gonna do is actually buy some boxes for this uh, that fit it 16 by 16. That way I know when it, I get the order for one, I can ship it out. Now I have other sizes of boxes that I could fit, uh, you know, I could kind of cobble together and fit it. But again, for a product like this, I think it has more of an appeal. So I'm, I'm confident in selling this, uh, and so I think it's probably worthwhile to go ahead and get boxes that are that 16 by 16 by six that can fit this comfortably. That way I can just send them right out and not have to be cutting and playing uh, origami with uh, cardboard boxes. So that's how I do a product, but really one of the main benefits of having a YouTube channel is when you put it out there, how you do something, lots of people chime in on what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right, what they like about it, what they don't like about it. And I'm hopeful you'll leave a comment below what you think of this process what you think uh, some of the shortcomings are, or what some of the strengths are. And if it helped you in the process of perhaps creating a product or inspiring you to create a product uh, to list on the internet to make a million dollars. And if you do make a million dollars, be sure to remit the check to the technicals. If you like this video, you know what to do. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and let me know if you wanna see more content like this. I'm the technicals, see you next time.